it's the next level. Things fall apart, right? Or do they? Who can tell anymore what's true? What's a Wilford ruse? So we hang on too tight to what we do know. Crack ourselves into harder factions. We're not afraid of our AgSec failing or biosecurity anymore. We're lighting red lanterns for Wilford because we're afraid of each other. Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this is a spoilerful podcast of Snowpiercer Season 2, Episode 8, The Eternal Engineer. Uh, and our synopsis is an engineering catastrophe on Snowpiercer forces Leighton to make a difficult choice, one that might cost him everything. Yeah, might. In, might. Yeah. Might well, as well take that word right out of the exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, for Leighton. So what? What were, for you? I mean, there's a whole lot in this in this episode. But what, what were your initial thoughts when you finished it, like the first time? Well, I wanted to go right back and watch it again mm -hmm. because there were a lot of little things in this episode. There's so much to unpack because of the little details. And if you don't pay close attention, you're going to miss them. So I feel like we're going to probably bring up so many of those on this podcast. Yeah, there were so many little things that I missed on the first watching that on the second viewing, I was like, I don't even understand what that's about. Like, what was the whole thing about him shooting the flare off at the end? I'm not sure. It was like a turning flare, but it was red. And so I don't know if that's signaling to everybody that Wilford's taking over or or what. I don't know. But it was... Yeah, I'm not really sure. I was trying to think, does it have something to do with Melanie so that she can see it? But I don't remember her seeing a flare. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, so I don't I don't know if that's ever going to get explained or not. But it was it was very, when I saw it in the second viewing, I was like, what is he doing? What's he pulling? And like, I literally had to pause it and back it up and go back in again and go, what is that? A flare? Okay. Okay, well, maybe we'll find out. But who knows? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm really interested, though. I feel like it might have just been the signaling to everyone that Wilford has taken over. Because remember the red light? So maybe that's what it is. Maybe that was Leighton's last ditch. Yeah. Final yeah, those, item that those he was last, do. Those last, like, minute and a half or so, was there was a lot of stuff happening that was confusing. So I may even have to watch this one again before the finale and since we have so much time now before the finale yes uh, but we'll get to Darn that at the you. end oh. <laughs> tnt now is not the time yeah unfortunately <laughs> uh, i need to don't... be able to see it so bad now and it's just gonna be weird not being able to yeah having to wait more than it. a week yeah i know oh well, well let's get into we'll let's get into our top five <laughs> And as All I right. do each Sounds week, good. why don't you kick us off? All right. Um, I wanted to start off with Josie and Bob. I feel like they formed this little friendship together. Mm -hmm. And she was really concerned when he came back in. And then she was starting to figure out that that skin, the goo that they put on her, had this amazing effect on her face. Mm -hmm. And then she sees Bob coming back and he's... Not really frostbitten. He's just frosty, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. He's frosty. <laughs> and she goes to him to talk to him. And then she actually goes to put her hand outside and sees that, wow, it doesn't get mm -hmm. frozen. Yeah. I had I had this in my notes, her discovery that this this either a side effect or the the main effect or whatever of this treatment is you know, she's probably not at quite at Bob's level yet, but she definitely just stuck her hand, literally stuck her hand out and had no problem and pulled it back in and it was fine. So, yeah, and she seemed really concerned for him. Yeah. I think they bonded a little bit and Absolutely. I feel like they've got this little friendship going now and 
I'm hoping maybe later down the road it will come to some positive fruition and we can get things back on track with Snowpiercer and Leighton back in charge, but I don't know. Ooh, so yeah. many sinister things so, going on. So much going on. But yeah, I, I love the Bob and Josie moment. We got a lot of, you know, like you said before, we got a lot of small moments with some characters yes. kind of spread out throughout the whole episode. So my number five or my first discussion point kind of is I want to talk a little bit about Boki. And I, I thought it was really kind of cool what happened with him, the whole arc we see of his character in, in this episode, because, you know, at first he doesn't believe Till and Leighton that it wasn't the Tailies. He's, he's so convinced that there's no way Wilfred would kill his Breachman, you know, and that's my attempt at an accent. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I loved once he figured it out that he, that he turned very quickly once he figured out that it, it had to be Wilford's doing because, and, and I had to work this out in my head is that it makes sense that Wilford would, would do this sabotage after killing the breachman because the breachman would be the only ones able to fix it. Yeah. And I still don't think he knows that Boki's alive. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think I the only reason I could think of why maybe he doesn't know that Boki's alive, but I'm kind of surprised we didn't get some sort of line, especially when Alex was kind of figuring out that he sent Icy Bob down there to sabotage the intakes, that we didn't get some kind of a, a line about I wonder who fixed it or something like that. But I guess he doesn't want to give away that he knows the breachmen are dead or he thinks the breachmen are all dead. You see, it was it was a little bit was a little confusing to me. I feel like we're watching something he like he is the conductor mm -hmm. and we're watching everything that he's orchestrated come to life. And seeing him at the end in Snowpiercer sitting down like, oh, it's, you know, his old familiar place and he's so happy. And that grin on his face, it just oh. made me think, oh, my God, I'm worried for people now. I'm mm -hmm. really worried for some of our people. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But, yeah, so it's it's interesting. I, I wonder, you know, he's got to know that somebody survived the attack, I would think. But we just didn't get yeah. that. We didn't get that information or we didn't get some sort of, you know, notice from him. No, we didn't. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not really sure what he knows and what he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. I think he's in for a surprise, though. Because yeah. I, I don't, I choose to believe he doesn't know that it was Boki that survived. I think he may know maybe one of them did, mm -hmm. but he may not know who it is. And to me, that is one man you do not want to piss off, and that's mm -hmm. Boki. And now that he's figured out what's going on, he's got the proof now. Right, and he's given his loyalty to Leighton. Yes. I really love that. I'm rewatching that scene the second time. I really love that when he gives him the button and he says... He calls him sir, you know, and he just says, shove it. I hope you shove it up his ass one day, huh? Yes. You know, and I just thought that was great. Loved like, that quote. That was so great. So what is your next discussion point? Uh, my next discussion point, and, and really the last, my next four mm -hmm. could have gone in any order. Uh-huh. I'm but the same I, one. Yeah, I wanted to bring up Miss Audrey. I'm still, again, wondering, is it the long con that she's playing, or is she fully turned to Wilford? I don't know. I don't want to think that she's gone to the bad side. And she does have that conversation with Josie about being free of the weight of others and the future being hers if she wants it. And I can understand, you know, when she was on Snowpiercer and wanting, you know, feeling like the weight of the world was on her a lot, but still... Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm right there with you because I have no I'm I'm so torn about this because I want it to be a long con. I want it to be that she hasn't been sucked in. And so the only answer I could come up with was that conversation in the dining car. It, there's other people around, so maybe she, you know, had to say things for the benefit of them, but it's still it just I'm I'm thrown off by Miss Audrey and I don't know where she stands and I I I want to know. Yeah, me too. I'm sure they're going to resolve it, or hopefully they're going to resolve it one way or the other in the season finale. But in two weeks. Yeah, in two <laughs> weeks. I can't believe it. it's in a two-hour. Two it's a two-hour one, but still, we got to wait two weeks for it. Ugh. I know. So yeah, I so, know. Yeah, Miss Audrey's <laughs> kind of my same thing with my my number four that I just don't I don't know what's going on with her, and I'm just still. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know yeah. where she's at. I feel like every week we just get more and more confused about it mm -hmm. because she isn't showing any signs of being on the Snowpiercer side anymore. Right, exactly. But we don't know if that's a put on or not. So. Right. I don't know. She's really talented. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. <laughs> All right. So let's go to your number three or your next discussion point. My next discussion point is Leighton as a leader. Mm. And he was really, to me, this episode, I felt like he was really getting into the groove of being the leader and get, earning the respect of people, at least making people conflicted, if, mm -hmm. even if they were thinking, well, I should support Wilford. I like that they people are just kind of looking at Leighton and realizing that maybe they should be conflicted and not just immediately think Wilfred is the best for the train. He's only the best for the train if you're a first-class passenger. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, he's not good. I mean, you saw how the others were living on Alice, and yeah, I just don't think he's going to be good. I'm really concerned. Again, it's one of those things that I look at it and I go, they don't, like, that whole conversation that Roshan and his, his wife have where where she thinks it's better for Snowpiercer to have Wilford in charge. She says he was in charge for seven years. I really wanted Roche to say something like, but it wasn't really him. You know, it was yeah. Melanie pretending to be him and the thought of him. So it was actually not his actual you know, his style. So we don't really know what Wilford's leadership is going to be, but we know it's not going to be good because we saw, like you said, we saw how people are living on Big Alice. Yeah. And it's just like, if that happens on Snowpiercer, I mean, what is he going to do about the tailies? Is he, he could just cut off the tailies altogether. I know. You know? I'm concerned about that. And this episode really left me really concerned about our people. I call them our people because I mm -hmm. I feel like over the last season and, and almost two seasons, we've really gotten to know so many of these characters. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, you almost get protective and you want them to just be okay. And yeah. to me, he represents, you know, a sadistic ruler who is really not thinking about anyone but himself. Right. So I'm concerned for yeah, a bunch of them. And I'm a little surprised that that his his little if if the people of Snowpiercer knew that he had caused the sabotage, maybe yeah. it wouldn't have been as easy for them to, you know, jump on his bandwagon and, and make him the leader again. But who knows? I um, know. I think we're in for a rude awakening. I think everyone is, except for first class passengers. I think that they're definitely you know, probably very happy that he's back. Yeah. I'm almost worried that this is that this, these three seasons, cause we know the third season is, is coming. I'm almost worried that it's like a three act play, you know, where the first yeah. act you have the triumph and the second act, you have the desperation and the defeat. And then the third act is where everything comes back up again. So I'm really worried that the cliffhanger of this into the second season is going to be a real downer. Yeah, I think you could be right. I think we should prepare ourselves yeah. for anything. I think it's been setting up to that this entire time. I'm hoping that if it is a cliffhanger, it's not too intense. Because I yeah. definitely don't want to watch it and feel like, oh my gosh, we have to wait a year. Yeah, a year <laughs> or however long it's going to end up being with, yeah. with COVID because we didn't. So. Because of the way that they shot this, we didn't really have, we didn't wait a year. No. We no. waited about eight months at the most. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we're used to having these seasons and I'm quite sure they're filming now, but I don't see it coming back maybe at least until late fall. So yeah, exactly. Ugh, don't want to wait. <laughs> so my third one is, uh, let's talk about Roche a little bit because I really loved oh, his, his voiceover. I've got one of his quotes when we get to quotes and I, I loved I couldn't tell at first, but I'm pretty sure he did not light his candle. And he I think did not. from the way the, the episode ended, we knew that he didn't that he definitely does not support Wilford at all. But I do have one big question about Roche that I haven't seen answered yet. Where okay. does he get his mustache waxed? He's I have that. no idea. <laughs> Maybe he gets it from Katya. From last week. Maybe she's got a supply and she trades with him. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I thought about that this week because they focused a lot on his face. And I'm like, he's got that really good handlebar mustache yeah. tight twist going and it's working <laughs> for him. But uh, anyway, I, I love how he, at the you know, 
throughout the episode, we see his brakeman. We see that he's in charge. Even Wilford says that at the at towards the end. He says, "You have power." with wisdom and aplomb. And I know he was just being sarcastic and mean because he knew it was coming. He knew that he was yeah. going to get rid of Roche, but man, it just to see, and that's really, you kind of pointed that out with Leighton and we're kind of seeing that with these, at least with Leighton and Roche, we see this kind of, we see how strong their power is. Yes. And then suddenly they're just struck down and yeah. it's not just, it's they've got his wife and his daughter in a drawer. I'm like, what? Why? This is, like you said, this is sadistic. He's going to put Roche, more than likely, he's putting Roche in a drawer. The jackboots are back. And it's just, oh, this ending. Business this... as usual, like we saw at the beginning yeah. of, the, oh. of the series. And the brutality that happens. I, yeah, I don't really want it to go back to that. Yeah, exactly. I liked Leighton leading the charge. And I liked... Roche being, you know, his, you know, second in command or just being supportive of him. Mm -hmm. There's one thing I worry though. Is Roche going to the drawers for sure? Or is oh Wilford you... gonna hold it over his head? I didn't even think about that. That that could be what it yeah. was. It wasn't that they were gonna put Roche in the drawers, it's gonna show him we have your wife and daughter yeah. in drawers. So you better do what we say. You better keep your brakemen in line. Yeah. And, oh. Yeah. Yeah, that could definitely play out. And you know Wilfred is good for that kind of manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. You know that he is. And yeah, I I don't know. That was something that just came to me while we were talking. I'm like, wait, what if he's not going to the drawers? What if mm -hmm. he's just they're putting, you know, Wilfred's using them as a bargaining chip to keep Roche in line with him. I love that that's what that's another thing that I had here that I want to make sure we I don't miss is I'm really glad they gave us that glimpse of his family last episode and that we really kind of got to know them in this yes. episode because it makes us care about them. It we, we yeah. find out that Anne, you know, that she has a network of her own. I don't know what her job is, but it looked like she had like the white coveralls kind of like a janitor, but I don't think she was a janitor. I'm not sure what her role was. And we know his daughter goes to school and he moved his daughter up train. Mm -hmm. To try to keep her safe and that didn't work. So And his wife was really focused on the fact that Pastor Logan was a good man, even though he wasn't a good man. Right. Right. And I couldn't really tell in that in that moment when he asked her if she believed Logan was guilty or not. She just kind of shakes her head. And yeah. I, I wasn't sure how she fell on that. So, you know, I would think that she supported her husband and his thoughts, but Oh, she may have I'm, a mind of her own, and maybe she's involved. I don't. I don't know. Uh, ah, so many questions. Exactly. They hardly. They get answered at weird times. We just, yeah. yeah. I, like I say every week, we need a whiteboard <laughs> with a question and a spot for an answer, and then we can fill it in as we go. Exactly. Exactly. We don't get those answers that we want every week. It's all like spontaneous. So yeah. it's like, oh, that's the answer. Right. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's your next one? My next one is Wilfred as the conductor of the orchestra. The mm. orchestra is Snowpiercer. I kind of mentioned this earlier. He seems like he's prepared for all the contingencies. Like, how did he know that Melanie had done some work on the engine? Well, I think, I, I think that's, I think, I, I, I have to disagree with you on that fact. I don't, I think... He didn't know what she had done. And that's what, because, okay. because Ben says, Ben or Javi, one of them says, Melanie retrofitted the bogey or retrofitted that thing on our fifth rotation. And that's where he comes up with the Melanie hack. And he's like, her hack has caused my module not to work. And I think that's the, that's one of the few times we've seen Wilford break. Because he suddenly, you know you're right. I think you're right. He suddenly is not in control. And when he when he talks to Alex, um, Alex and Alex says, "Is this your doing?" And he's like, "No," you know. And he's like, "Really?" <laughs> like, and you can tell until he doesn't settle down until he figures out how to use it to his advantage. And that's what oh, this yeah. was my number two as well was was to talk a little bit about Wilford. So I, I think I. I <sighs> I have to give him a little bit of a little bit of props though. That thing with the hand with Josie was was pretty cool where he That was pretty cool. And I I 
that seems legit. Like I didn't look it up or I didn't research it or anything, but that really seems legit. I know there was a, I hate that I bring this up. I used to watch Grey's Anatomy. I don't need more because it sucks. But, um, <laughs> but there <laughs> Tell was us a, how there, you really feel, Steve. Tell there was a character, really there was a character that lost her leg and she was having phantom pains. And one of the doctors gave her a mirror so that she could set and see and it would look like when she looked down, it would look like she had two legs. Oh, and, okay. and a friend of mine who's a, a counselor at the, he's a counselor now, but at the time he was studying, he said, that's a, a real way where they treat phantom limb syndrome for those kind of things is they put a mirror down there so you can actually see two, two legs. And so it, it, it sounds legit. The thing with the fake hand and then the, the, the blanket over it. So you, she couldn't see, that it was detached. So that sounded legit. So I got to give him a little bit, but then, then he's just manipulating her after that because, you know, he's all like, I'm, we're not going to lock your door anymore and welcome to big Alice. And I, it, he wants something from her. Yeah, yeah. He wants something from her. He knows icy Bob is not at a hundred percent. It may not even survive his little trek that mm -hmm. he took outside. And so he's going to need a backup plan. He doesn't understand. There's one thing that Wilfred doesn't understand, and that is Josie is probably one of the toughest people on that train. She's so loyal to Leighton. Exactly. And he's about to reunite them. Yes. Because Leighton's being taken to Big Alice. Yep. So it's it's gonna be interesting to see. You know, then we get the we get we find out about kind of like the double sabotage where Icy Bob put that, um, what did Bogey call it? A number 10 Wilford, that big spike yeah. <laughs> in there. But what, but there was a secondary part of the sabotage that caused it to, to damage this God module. And of course, Wilford. It's called God. Yeah. It's going to have a it's God, God module. module. Oh my goodness. That only he has control over. I love that it was the tunnelman that saw him and reported that he was back and he was going to the engine. And we already talked about kind of that frustration that he had when he realized everything was not going according to plan. Yeah. But then, like I said, he uses it to his advantage and actually kind of moves Javi out of the way. He gets by, he gets some jabs at Leighton there about Leighton, you're not an engineer. It takes an engineer to do this. And really all he does is just, he flips some switches and he gets on the radio and he tells everybody to start. You know, yeah. I mean, but that's all it took because as soon as people heard his voice, mm -hmm. that was it. Yeah. They're all like, love him so much. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, you really don't know no. what he's all about. And I don't think that being on Big Alice has softened him up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. I that... think he's harder than he used to even was before and we know what he was capable of before because we saw his orders to kill the geneticists mm -hmm. and you know all he's he's a very cruel man and he's sadistic so yeah Sean, and let's just say it sean bean is is really killing he it is. in this role he, he really i mean like i i can't imagine anyone else playing this kind of megalomaniac psychotic sociopathic manipulator he, it's I just know. so it's so good and he's doing such a good job at it and i loved when you see him and leighton there as when they're doing that manual shutdown and you can see it on leighton's face you can see the power slipping away from him and going to wilford and like you said he gets that smile on his face there yeah when he's doing it and oh uh, it's just Twist. It's a gut punch because you hate it. Yeah, you hate it. He's doing such a he's doing his job as an actor mm -hmm. by making us, you know, hate him. Yeah, and it's working real well. And yeah, I'm really concerned for Ben because we know he doesn't like Ben. Right. I was yeah. I was surprised that he didn't kick Ben out of the engine. Yeah. Uh, I think he needs him. I think he needs an engineer. Yeah. And so he needs Ben and Javi. I think Javi is probably pretty safe, but I think Ben is definitely, I think, definitely I in think trouble. Once Wilford gets everything out of Ben that he needs, which all he needs, he's got to find out from Ben, because now that he knows that Melanie has done some changes, he's going to have yeah. to get, get with Ben and Javi and say, okay, what else has changed? You know, what else has yeah. been, has been, you know, whatever, retrofitted. And, 
uh, he once he gets that and oh, whatever happens with Melanie, I don't know. Maybe I know. Uh, but you know what? The big thing, though, I think that came out of this episode too. Another big thing: Alex is really starting to realize who he is. Yes, yes, and we'll get we'll talk some more about Alex when we get to my number one because that's awesome. Alex is my number one. Uh, but what is your last discussion point? My last discussion point is basically the whole last minute and a half ending of the episode. Leighton being in tears, worrying if he'll see his child grow up or be born, knowing that he feels like he failed. He was not able, he made the best decision he could to try to protect the people on the train. And it caused him personally to lose control of the train. And that moment of emotional release, I think David Diggs was impeccable. Yeah. I really, really have to give props to him for that. And then Roche also, I mean, the music that was playing during this also added to it. And I didn't take down the name of the song, but Roche going, and I just wondered, does he realize that his family was going to be in the drawers? Did he make the decision for them to all go in the, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. And it, it, that, Again, that was another of those moments with Miss Audrey where he's like, oh, you're my escort. I, I wonder if he thought he was going into the drawers, you know. I don't, I and, don't know. I thought he was, thought he was going to see Wilford. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure now that you mentioned it. I'm not sure what his, what, what he was doing. Um, yeah. He, he passed off Leighton to the jackboots and the jackboots, which that was another thing that kind of confused me why Leighton was handcuffed in that hospitality room were they worried that he was going to try to take over the train or i don't know and the jack boots yeah. you know we get that rumor there's that that rumor uh from the other brakemen that the jack boots are organizing again and it was like i was going to snap my fingers but i don't want to mess up the recording um it was, like, <laughs> it was like we didn't see anything of that until no. right now and it's all of a sudden yeah. wilford reappears the jack boots are back up um so i wonder if in the final episodes, we're going to get some flashbacks of showing how this, if there was more to this, because it was almost like yeah, a, a silent, it was almost like a silent revolution. Like at the end of season one, you know, we have this bloody revolution where Leighton wins here. We have this kind of silent, um, you know, savior takeover by Wilford. Yeah. And it just, all of a sudden it's Wilford's in charge. So, two different styles. Yeah. Yeah. So two gonna... different styles, two different transitions of power. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that having a war with Wilford is going to get anything done either. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't think fighting, I don't think another big fight, but uh, I don't want to say what I saw in the preview that I think there's going to be some action next. Well, I'm next down time. for some action. Anything that will get our train back on track. Yes. And get Melanie on the train with the information oh. she has. Yeah. That would be nice to know. That would be great. Uh-oh. Steve. You froze. Um, um, okay, okay, okay. You froze for a second. Oh, sorry, my back. On now? my end. Am so I here? all I yeah, I okay. can hear you. Okay. All right. So I think we're good. Yeah, I just said Oh, it's saying my internet connection is unstable, so I may be. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. let's we'll we'll wrap up here. We don't have very much left here, so. Um... We don't. So basically, my number one was the face, like the faces mm -hmm. of people that they showed all the different, all the different characters at the end. Um, Zara connecting with Leighton before he's taken away. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. I just feel like the ending was super solid, and now I. I have not seen any previews for next week, yeah. so I'm gonna have to go check those out. Cause, or actually, it doesn't for show two much. It now. doesn't. It doesn't show much. I did, and I want to talk. Yeah, that is great. That was a great scene between Zara and um, and Leighton because one of the things that that it wasn't until the second time watching it that I picked up on it. That I could, you could really tell there was not a romantic connection there. Yeah, that that Agreed. It, was, it was definitely a friendship 
connection. It was a, yes. a loyalty. It was a, you know, it was a, we had something in the past, but now we're, we're moving on from that. And I really liked that scene and the way the David Diggs and, and the actors uh, who plays uh, Zara played it. Cause it was really, cause they, that could, that kind of a scene could have be, been played up as like a romantic kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it wasn't. But it, I it felt wasn't. like they were BFFs, mm -hmm. more, more best friends. We've been through a lot together. So let's, yeah. you know, I, there, there's mutual worry because she is carrying his child. Mm -hmm. Right. So, right. you know, there's mutual worry there. I get that. Very cool. That's what I got from the scene. Not a love, a love no. triangle or love interest. And, and I love that you mentioned the faces because even with Ruth, we didn't get a lot of Ruth in this episode, but what we got of her was really great. And yeah. We got more she... of her face as well. So. I think she's really going to be conflicted, and I think she's one of the key players that can make the help make the change to get back on track. Yeah. But it's going to take a lot of effort for them to get Wilfred out of there. I mean, Melanie, it was really hard. That decision from her way back when she left him behind. Mm -hmm. He's had seven years to build up this anger and frustration and build this plan. Yeah. And now it's come to fruition and he's got back what he wanted. It's very scary. <laughs> okay. So my number one is Alex. And I just absolutely, like I said before, I loved Alex. I loved seeing her kind of figuring out what, what Wilford had done. And then there's that moment when she says, oh, they're venting. And he's like, well, why don't you call them? And then they kind of lie to her about it. But then later she's looking at the blueprints and even Wilford knows, I see your little hamsters turning, you know, yeah. and she figures out that he had Icy Bob sabotage the intake vents. And then Miss Audrey has that line where she says, well, she's two steps behind because Alex didn't know about the whole God module thing. Um, right. But then again, and it, it was, her, there was a, a resolve on her face when Wilford told her she was going to have to basically push the entire train with big Alice, she was going to have to have her hand on that throttle, making sure that they didn't lose momentum. And they only had less than three minutes, I know. you know, to, to make it work. So I just, I just loved it. And it was, uh, again, I think Rowan Blanchard did a, a wonderful, wonderful job of, of uh, pulling that off. So. Absolutely. I think she is going to be quite an in-demand actress after she's done on this show because she's really talented and i love the change that we've seen in the character from the beginning when mm -hmm. she was so cold towards her mother to now she's putting these pieces together and i think she's another key mm -hmm. i think there are definitely some key players in what's going to have to happen to get things back and she's one of those people that exactly they're gonna need her so any notes that we haven't already covered? Um, well, I had Boki as a wild card, but I think we've already kind of talked about him. Still wondering if Wilfred knows he's alive. Mm -hmm. But at least Boki knows that Wilfred's responsible for all of his brethren dying. So yeah. Yeah. that's a good thing. And the other thing that I had was this little romance between LJ and Oz. That like was interesting. Yeah. I thought they had already formed this relationship. So the fact that it looked like they were kissing for the first time, I'm thinking, wow, I thought they were together this whole time. So I guess I was wrong. Yeah. And I like that, that, that whole thing at the beginning where it looks like basically they're in charge of janitorial because Oz says something about this is our chance to shine. We don't want them to take janitorial away from us. And then, you know, when she's cooking the dinner, she's up in Terrence's little yeah, whatever loft that he lived in. So they've taken over Terrence's spot, but still nobody said anything about Terrence. <laughs> I, and we didn't have any Pike this episode, so we didn't get a chance to see his shaved head. Um, no, uh, but, no. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, you know what? I guess we'll see. Yeah. I mean, she seems to be on the Wilford side, but honestly, I think she could be swayed to whatever side is going to get her what she wants, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Exactly. And I'm not sure what it is. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, I think the only note that I have that we haven't already talked about, uh, we talked a little bit about Melanie, but we didn't mention those. They're kind of just were quick throwaway lines where they talked about being late to yes. pick her up. And I thought that By was interesting. Two days. 
knowing uh, knowing where knowing where we're, where they're at where she's at right now and and what's going to happen. Uh, it was interesting that we got those lines. So, I have a feeling that in the next, in the first half of our season finale, we're going to get them catching up to Melanie, mm-hmm. to where we left her, to you know, like two weeks ago. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to get caught up to that, and yeah. I hope the last hour. I don't expect that Wilfred's going to lose control of the train this season. I think we should probably prepare ourselves for him being in control for the last two episodes. However, I'm hoping that the tables get set for things for next season. I hope that they set the table yeah. for things to happen next year. Yeah, I hope we get Melanie back on the train. I don't know how that's how they're going to do that if Wilford's still in control. So we'll, yeah. we'll just have to see. Yeah, I don't know. I'm really concerned. Lots of things happening and... Not a lot of answers, but a lot of little tidbits that could build into something. Yeah. So I feel like we've got a big puzzle to put together. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, we've got some quotes here. Yes. Um, um, I'll, go ahead. Why don't you give your first one and then I'll go with my first one. And uh, All right. Well, my first one is actually from Boki. I love this quote. We mentioned it earlier, but this is the full quote. Wilfred gave me this himself. He said, Breachmen risk their lives for me. With this, I pledge the same to you. Take it. Maybe you can shove it up his ass one day. Huh, sir. And I love the adding of the sir <laughs> in there. I thought that was really, really great. Me um, too. The first one I had is I loved when, when Roche was talking to his daughter and he said, you can misbehave at the Paolis. Just don't make my brakeman use his nightstick on you on the way up. So, <laughs> just a little moment I, of levity there. But. I know. I know. He, feel like it was the calm before the storm Mm -hmm. really and it wasn't a huge buzzing storm either it was kind of this subtle slow transition that i mean the only way you really could tell was layton's face Mm -hmm. changing throughout um i liked what roche said to his wife when he was talking about how working for wilford and now working for layton what he's understood. Mm -hmm. And he says, do you want to know who Leighton is? He's a good guy. And I forgot what a good guy was. He is trying to give this train, our daughter, our family, a world that we can be proud to live in. I love that you had that line in there because the one that he says, right. And he's really comparing and contrasting Wilford and Leighton because the line he says right before that to, to her is, and you realize, okay, Wilford, he designed this train with portals to freeze people's limbs off. Yeah. And I remember Mark and I discussing this in the first season about why those portals were there. Why would you put that design into this train yeah. unless you specifically meant it as a punishment device? to to remove limbs and so it was great to hear that confirmation but also like you said to see the bad guy good guy kind of thing agreed agreed i think too one thing we learned from about roche in this episode that we didn't mention is he and his wife had lost two other children yeah yeah and And, i didn't get it that was before i'm assuming that was before the train but i don't know if it was yeah yeah, I'm not sure. They didn't really elaborate on it, but that's what uh, reading this quote reminded me of that, mm-hmm. that yes, he also mentioned that they had lost um, two children. Mm, and she, of, and they, of course, they don't want to lose another. Right. So what's your next one? Uh, my last one is the actual last, the final line of the episode. We kind of talked about it, but it's such a chilling line that comes from ben when he says mr wilford you have the train oh and the look on his face he looks resigned and defeated yeah so sad to see because he felt he was so empowered before Mm -hmm. he's always been empowered but he looked completely destroyed yeah Mm. and that was really sad (laughs) Well, my last one was kind of a funny one. It was an exchange between Oz and LJ when they were up cooking in Terrence's old flat. And Oz says, you were great today. And she says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like some working class action hero. I'm like, yep. 
Okay. Really, really You go, good. LJ. There we go. <laughs> and I, I love that him telling her that she's the only person who likes him. And when she talks about Till and he's like, no, Till and I just went through things together. And yeah, and we weren't really friends. We just went, we just have history, you know, right. I was like, oh, but you, you're my person. So I, I love that. It's, it's, it's a cute little psychotic. Uh, um. Couple, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that he's really aware of just how psychotic she is, but she seems to be doing okay right now. She, so yeah, we'll, she may be calmed down a bit. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> chopping, chopping people's things off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I do have a podcast recommendation that I want to put out okay. there. Um, I didn't put it in the notes, but uh, this week, TD podcast industries, they covered, uh, they covered the making of the WandaVision. And I really I was a, saw that. It was a wonderful episode. I want to watch that documentary now because all the things that they brought up that uh, of things that were specifically done on purpose and the way it was done. So uh, if you have not checked out Derek and uh, John and Chris over on TV Podcast Industries, uh, go check them out with their review of the WandaVision documentary. I think it's called Assembled or something like that. We're yeah. Have to see if we can find it somewhere. Oh, definitely. I have one this week. It's one I just started listening to, but I find it really interesting. Mm -hmm. This um, lady, her name is Kate Shondy, and she does a podcast called Work, actually. And she talks to people who have different types of jobs and gets, like, the real story of what it's like to be in those jobs. Huh. And it's very candid, and she promotes it like... It's the realities behind the job, whether you're looking to change a career or are just damn nosy. <laughs> and I find that humorous because, you know, you when you go and interview for a job, you ask those questions in the interview. You're never really sure if that's real information or if someone's sugarcoating it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like on this podcast, they're really pretty candid about things so i like that very cool so i wanted to share that for anyone who might want a palate cleansing episode that has nothing to do with tv very cool <laughs> um well as always you can submit your feedback to us on our facebook page uh we'll be putting up a, a post for feedback uh every week or every two weeks depending on when the stupid show is coming back no, it's oh. not a stupid show it's a stupid channel we um, love it that's why we're so <laughs> irritated about it <laughs> Uh, you can check out our website at panels to pixels podcast.com. You can go to our Facebook group, which is just facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, you can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one, the TO spelled out right in the middle and the number one. We also have a YouTube channel uh, that is panels to pixels podcast. You can go there, subscribe, give us a thumbs up and check us out on YouTube next week. Well, not sure what's going to be happening next week. Hopefully Mark <laughs> and I will be back with the first episode of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But uh, Daphne and I will definitely be back after March 29th to cover the two episode season finale of Snowpiercer season two. So hopefully you will catch up with us then and uh, give us some feedback and tell us what you think. We'll try to put a deadline on there. I think that's the only thing I've been missing from my Facebook posts is giving people a deadline for feedback. This yeah. one might be tougher to do the next day. I don't know. It's a two hours. Ugh, Oof, so well. much to process. We may not be able to do it the next day because yeah. I feel like this is going to be one where so much happens that we're going to have a ton of notes, a ton of things to break down. Yeah. So we may, so we have, may to have to take a little, a little more bit. time. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. That way it'll be out and it'll be relevant. And, uh, uh, so that's what's happening with me. Uh, Daphne, what are you guys covering on your Run For Your Lives podcast this week? Well, we just posted the episode for Jurassic Park 3, which was a ton of fun. It was great to go back to talking about dinosaurs. So that was a lot of fun. And also this week, we're going to be posting an episode on St. Patrick's Day. It's an Irish movie called Grabbers. And we have our good friend Derek from TV Podcast Industries on to break the movie down with us. So nice. It was a lot of fun. Can't nice. wait to get it out there. An Irishman for an Irish movie. Oh, we um, had such a great discussion. So and I, have, I can't wait. I have to formally apologize. I don't know what happened to me last week. It was just crazy week. I did not get a chance. <laughs> I did watch Jurassic Park 3 um, on Friday and uh, really enjoyed it. I forgot how 
it really is a fun movie to watch if you kind of suspend a lot of your disbelief on certain things. Um, it, it is. There's a lot of great things about it. I think sometimes people try to hold it up so much with the first two. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you look at it like it's a second, like it's on its own, yeah, it actually comes out a lot better. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I totally like that, you know, you have these badass mercenaries and they're gone in the, within the first you know, <laughs> 20 minutes of getting on the island. Uh, so, uh, so good. I can't wait till you guys cover Jurassic World. Um, I will definitely be getting uh, a voicemail to you for that one. Uh, I wasn't able to watch Grabbers this week, but I did send you a voicemail. So. Hopefully you'll you have it. got to watch Grabbers, Steve. I've got I to think figure it... out how to how to see it because, like, I I think I can pay for it on Amazon Prime. You or... really? If there ever was a movie made for you, this is the one. It looks like it. It, it looks is, like it. So. It is all kinds of fun, and I'm really looking forward to getting that one out there. And Peg and I also announced on our podcast that we're going to cover Camp Cretaceous. Oh, I, which I, is I did one of the that. Jurassic Park, um, a Jurassic World themed uh, animated series. So we're going to be doing that as well. So lots okay. of stuff going on. To try to check that on. That's on Netflix, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, very cool. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night.